Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Building a Nation with Team Canada and today we are back with the 2021 North American Nations League which should probably be well what is definitely the final game in the uh, group stage of this competition and once again it comes down to Canada versus Mexico it's getting to be a familiar refrain this year and in most competitions it seems this way it's coming down at least when we're uh, you know when we're in the group stage here it comes down to Canada versus Mexico I'd actually in some ways I'd like a break from Mexico but not this year because this year we're getting ready for the World Cup and that means we gotta try to beat Mexico one of these days but anyway we've gone over that we've gone over that a million times so let's talk about the Nations League here for a minute first of all it's a competition that is very new just started in 2019 so we've been playing it for a couple of seasons here and honestly I haven't been that uh, impressed with it it's not really my favorite competition the group stage is so weird with just three teams four games I don't know I don't like it I understand the purpose of the Nations League it's actually not for us it's for some of the smaller teams nations around the uh, the continent to get more games in during different years you know there are a lot of teams in CONCACAF that they only play like a couple of games every four years like whenever the Olympics come around whenever Olympic qualifying comes around that's when they get their game so the Nations League is an attempt to get those teams playing every year so that we can get some improvement in some of these nations and you've seen it already in nations like curacao they had a very good gold cup this year and it's because you know they've got more games this year not not specifically due to the nations league but due to other mechanisms that have also gone on but anyway not my favorite competition but let's see also in terms of videos it's like broken up it's too it's too far apart spread out too much where we only get two videos and then you wait a couple of months and then two videos and blah 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 anyway group one where we're in obviously Mexico is on top Antigua and Barbuda they have been relegated they go down to North American Nations League Division B and there's a Division C below that so there's what I didn't really realize is there are three different levels so you know very small nations will still get to play in this competition and that's kind of what i was talking about they'll battle it out in group c to get promoted to group b and so on and so forth but antigua they're going back down we so we are safe in the middle but now the question is can we get promoted to the next round and try to actually win a championship and that's going to be difficult because not only do we have to beat mexico we are three points behind mexico so going into this fourth and final game, we have to beat them to tie them at nine points. And then also we have to beat them by three goals because they scored quite a few. Let's take a look at the, uh, oops, not the schedule, matches and results. Um, let's see, can we drop back a little bit here? Costa Rica, Cuba. There it is. Mexico beat Antigua 4-0 and uh, that brought their goal differential back up and so yeah it's gonna be difficult and it's gonna change my plan some because it doesn't matter if we win we can't just win one nil or win three three or whatever it's got to be we got to score and we got to score a lot of goals so we're gonna have to change our tactics today and uh, maybe go a little bit offensive now some other things going on is we did play in a friendly because of this wacky schedule uh, Mexico played two games they played that game versus Antigua and now they're playing against us whereas we only had one game today to play this uh, round so we scheduled a friendly or at least a, a friendly was scheduled by someone somewhere to play Monster Monsterat, Monsterat, Monster Island, not exactly sure. I looked them up a little bit. I didn't really look up how to pronounce uh, their island's name, but they are a small island in the West Indies chain of islands. 
And what's crazy is like half their island is like an active volcano. So there's like part whole half of the country where you're really not supposed to go, especially if you're a tourist. It's like a no go zone. Um, there are people, I guess, who still live there, but they're actually looking to build new cities on the other side of the island and like move people away from this active volcano or, you know, semi-active volcano. It's not like spewing lava everywhere at the moment. But uh, geologists or volcanologists, I suppose, categorize it as an active volcano. So it's like it could blow at any minute. Let's get out of here kind of situation. Anyway, uh, they have a very small population. <laughs> We've looked probably for obvious reasons. Only 5,000 people there. Nicknamed the Emerald Boys. That's a pretty cool nickname. The Emerald, Emerald Isles, perhaps. Fluent in English. I've heard there, there is some Irish spoken there as well. Some Irish immigrants possibly have come and gone there. And many of their players, like a lot of these nations uh, who have uh, were former colonies, like they're actually still a British territory. So um, many, many of the players can sort of tap into those colonial roots, if you will. And they'll actually get players from England or wherever their colonies came from to come and play for them. Like people with heritage dating back to um, this country from the home country. I don't know if I'm explaining that right. But anyway, take a look at their squad. For example, Graham Every, if we can click on him, he's uh, playing in Eastburn, Eastburn Borough right now. So he's an English Englishman who's got heritage and so he has decided to switch his allegiance over to Monsterat and play for him. They do have a few players, you know, nobody worth a ton of money. One pretty decent player here, Lyle Taylor, valued at 3.3 million, playing at Charlton, 31 years old, striker, winger, good all around player, like. You know, he's nothing to sneeze at. He's halfway decent. So they could have given us some sort of game, but they didn't really give us too much trouble. We can take a look at that game real quick. We beat them 3 0. It's a pretty good game. And uh, you might notice a new name who scored all those goals a hat trick by a new guy, Craig Smith. Now, if you had an eagle eye, maybe you could have seen this guy on some of our under-20 teams recently. But I decided to add him to the first team for a couple of different reasons. First of all, we had a few injuries to our strikers. Um, I knew that I would be playing this friendly, so I knew there would be a chance to get this guy some playing time. But look at him. He's 18 years old. He's pretty good. He's got some very interesting attributes. A lot of fitness, balance, acceleration. So he's he's uh, a guy with a lot of quickness on the front line. He's got some good mental attributes, interesting uh, technical attributes. I wish he had better finishing, but he got three goals. So I don't know what better finishing you need than that. But the other reason why I wanted to call him up is because, um, take a look at his information here. He had English, you know, he was eligible to play for England. And England was sniffing around him a little bit. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that we tied him up with a cap. He's eligible, you know, he's playing over in Denmark right now. So I, I just didn't want him to get any ideas about playing for some other team, some other country. I wanted to, to lock him down because he's a pretty good player with pretty good potential. So let's take a look at his goals just to break things up a little bit. And yeah, we're, you know, we're slowly adding players to the team. This is kind of what I wanted to do going into the World Cup. You know, every four years we need to start adding new blood to the team. So here we are, his Baloo down the near side sends the cross. Easy goal from Smith just out positions his two defenders. I mean, he was marked by two defenders, but he was just in better position. There's our other new guy, Millar, who we got to switch over from England. He sends a great pass into Smith. One touch, bangs it home for his second goal. Outstanding. And then his third goal here sends it in. Kyle Laren looking, looking, 
Bit of a deflected shot there, but Smith pounces on it and puts it in near side. So not the greatest goalkeeping or defending right there, but, you know, he was Johnny on the spot. He was a guy who was paying attention, and that's kind of what you want. So that was outstanding. Very, very good. Now, the under-20s, they also had a couple of friendlies. They also played Monsterit. They beat them 3-1. A lot of our uh, players that we've been looking at recently have played. Uh, Eric, our young goalkeeper from the Vancouver Academy, got some playing time. He got scored on one goal, but, uh, you know, he still got the win. Some other guys, Cerbelli is still in the lineup there, 17 years old now. Still looking okay. Not sure how much he's improved, but, you know, he still looks pretty good. Ross is still on the team. 20 years old now. He's gained that half star, so he's two and a half stars. Pretty good acceleration pace, all that stuff. Colin is back in the squad after being left out a few times. He's another one of our players. He's on loan currently from Vancouver. This guy's not improving the way I want him to do. Especially at 19 years old, um, you know, I got some I got some worries about him. He is valued at 1.4 million, so that's pretty good. But I don't know, I just something about him. I don't I don't see it. And then of course our old pal Daniel Valenti scored a couple of more goals. Scored two more goals in this game. He's up to two and a half stars. We're gonna sign him to a contract at the end of the season, so we're looking pretty good there. And then the other 20s also beat the British Virgin Islands. And see here, Daniel Valenti got another two goals. So he's just all over the place. 29 shots versus the Virgin Islands. Here's uh, Smoljovic back to Medwin. Haven't really looked at him much, but there's Valenti just over the top. Poor defending right there. Valenti just sort of had to stand there. And here we go. Ross bangs one forward. Valenti again just beats the one defender. Beats the second defender. Easy goal there. Just puts it in the far corner. He's scoring like a beast. So we got to call him up to Vancouver and get things going. All right, here we are. Mexico versus Canada. Mexico, the betting favorites, but not by a lot. Nearly even odds um well, i guess that's not how it works anyway five to four odds bet is that bet five dollars win four or bet four win five i'm not sure how that how that goes but anyway mexico's in excellent form two win or four wins one draw no loss in their last five we get we're a little inconsistent right now Three wins, one draw, one loss in our last. And, of course, was that loss against Mexico? Yes, that loss was against Mexico. They now have five wins and two draws in seven games versus Canada. We have yet to defeat Mexico. We're getting closer. Uh, they haven't yet fired their new coach, Guillermo Hoyos. We'll see how long that lasts. But today's matchup is going to be up in BMO Field. Wet, breezy a little chilly 50 degrees so we'll see how mexico deals with the weather let's get to the team selection and because of what we saw because of the whole uh, gold differential issue we're gonna have to change things up and we're gonna have to go with formation number two we're gonna go on the attack we're not gonna mess around we're gonna go after these guys and try to actually win so let's go. No messing around today. We're not going to back down. We're going to play our game. And Mexico's going to do something a little different. They're going with the Stargate formation. They've dialed in the location to planet Earth. They're going to play a little bit defensive. A lot of familiar names here. Hernandez in goal. Arroyo. Alvarez on defense. Leyun on the back line. Gonzalez. Gavea, Herrera taking the captain's armband. The lone central midfielder. He's got two defensive midfielders behind him. So I don't exactly know. I mean, they're obviously just playing for a low-scoring game because that's all they need. Lainez, Lozano now on the right. I said that he probably plays better on the left, but hey. And then Corona up top. Jesus, 
Corona, good old JC. Now, obviously, he's no Chicharito, but we have played against this guy before, and he has, you know, scored against us before, so we can't take him lightly. But anyway, here we go. We're going with Borgen in goal, Cabra, Romeo, Hakanen, and Tomori on defense. So pretty good young defense we got going on. A lot of uh, Vancouver players. Piet, Arfield in the midfield. Brim on the left, Asario on the right, Hamilton and David up top. So we'll see. We got a lot of options currently in terms of attackers, but this is kind of our best four at the moment. So let's go. Asario gives us a little bit of flexibility because, um, uh, let's see, let's avenge what happened last time. Asario gives us some flexibility because he can be like an advanced playmaker out on the wing. But other than that, he doesn't give us sort of the speed that we like out there. But he's not bad. He's not a bad option on the wing. Um, it's just we, I'd set up this um, roster. I'd set these guys up to play the 4-4-2 rather than, you know, the Z formation or formation number two. So I had some of our, our more more well-rounded wingers rather than our just all-out speed attack type dudes called up so we're not really set up to play this formation but you know we gotta we gotta play this formation oh come on we can't let a goal like that in 36 seconds in and borgian I don't even know what to call that. He just fouled it up. I mean, our defense, uh, you know, was a little confused there. Lainez just... Hakkinen didn't close him down. And then Borgen just... I don't think he expected that to go off the post. He didn't die for it. A little lazy, my man. A little lazy. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, Hakkinen is not... On stopper that's his problem it's one of the keys to this formation is to have this defender go forward all right here we go Asario is gonna try to get one back nope he sends it straight to Hernandez at least he got it on goal that's good I guess but now Mexico can really just sit back because now we have to score four goals It's a daunting task. Here we go. Leyun again sends one in. Arfield sends it out. Hamilton going to start the counterattack perhaps. Nope. 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 Going to play it slow to Arfield. Okay. David drops it back. David's currently the only one forward. Here we go. Brim on the near sideline. He's got some pace to put some pressure on these boys. Sends in the cross. You know, not what I would call a well-thought-out counterattack, but Mexico was standing way back, not letting David get behind him. Highlight continues, though. Do we have a mega highlight on our hands? I think we do. Asario, again, near side to Brim. They're leaving him open. Oh, he cuts inside. Back to Asario. So I'm trying to train Brim to stay out wide because I don't like that he cuts inside. Like he doesn't, uh, he doesn't need to do that. That's not where his skills lie. Leun drives one in. Lainez needs to be closed down on. I guess we learned that the hard way. Yeah, Brim, he's he's a guy. He's got that speed, that acceleration, and crossing. He does have some first touch and dribbling, but we want him to stay outside. Oh. David is injured. Good thing we have Miller or Millar. Do we call him Miller or do we call him Millar? It's spelled Millar. We could bring in Craig Smith. He's 90% fit. He scored a hat trick. Why not? Why not? Let's give him a shot against the big boys. Here's Tamori. Drops it to our field. Centers to Piet. Piet's got some space. Takes the shot. Okay. Let's um. Let's give him the old concentrate. 
Must close down on Leyun. Okay. 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 We give them the old concentrate, and uh, they don't pay too much attention. A little too early in the game for a shout, I think. Looks like they've changed to a shorter passing style. Yep. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. They're going to try to just hold on to the ball. 33 minutes already passed. Team instructions. Already tightly marking and, uh, you know, doing what we can. Maybe in the second half we'll start getting stuck in. I don't know. Don't really want to give Mexico a ton of free kicks is the problem. But we also don't want this to happen. We are on extended highlights. We don't want them to just sit on the ball. I mean, we do have 55% of possession, which is incredible. Oh, Lozano. I don't know if he's tired or if he picked up a knock, but he's dropped down to 51% there. He's getting slightly better. So he must have picked up a minor injury. Three minutes of stoppage time. Not exactly the first half that we wanted. Is there a way to just yell at the guys and say, just score a bunch of goals, please? Let's let's do nothing but score goals. Okay, tactics. I think we'll have to send Cabra wing back on attack. Jonathan Osario. Inside forward on attack. You know, I guess we could... Uh, no, let's not worry about sending Tamori on attack right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so now I actually kind of want Brim to tuck inside because we sent Cabra out there. Uh, you know, we don't really have an attacking fullback on the right. Unfortunately, our backup is Ahmed, who is not... I mean, he's a little bit better on the attack. So maybe we'll bring him in the second half if Tamori doesn't contribute anything. Let's get to the dressing room. Here we go, pep talk. Um, let's be passionate. Um... Yeah, give the fans something to cheer about. Nope. You know, is that the equivalent of scoring goals? Oh, gosh. Here comes the rain. Like, if the fans are going to cheer, that probably means you're going to score goals, right? Hopefully. Here we go. Lainez, good defense by Arfield. Coming back with that uh, piston action that I like to use down the midfield. It's hard to explain my theory on the formation number two but basically you think of it as pistons as one player goes up the field the other player can come down the field and they can trap guys um you know coming from up the field and down the field sort of like uh you know in between scissors or pistons or however you want to describe it and it works sometimes like that like when our field came back down the field see that see him getting pinched as Hakkinen comes up the field, our field comes down the field, and he got pinched between those two defenders. Now, if a team is very good at moving the ball laterally, then we got a little bit of problem. But if they're a team that likes to just go straight up and down the field, we can catch them. It seems to work. I don't know. It's probably not the greatest uh, tactics in the world, but hey... It is a video game, after all, and you have to kind of, you know, take advantage of what you can take advantage of sometimes. 62 minutes have already passed. Make another sub here. We'll bring Ahmed in. We'll let him play on the attack. All right, boys, let's go. Herrera still only at 63%. They'll probably have to bring him out soon. 
Well, that was a fortuitous exchange there because Tamori just got a yellow card. So Ahmed can get in there, take that yellow card out of there. And here we go. Let's uh, get a goal or something. Let's get three, four, five goals, anything. Team instructions. Pre prevent goalkeeper. Um, get stuck in. If you're going to go out, let's go out with a bang. Go out with a crunch. Here we go. Throw in. Cabra gets it to Hamilton. Tries to center it. Brim knocks it back to Piet. Centers for Arfield. He's got some room to take the shot. Shots have all been wide. Like the goalkeeper didn't even need to move. We've only had six shots. That's terrible. Hakkinen is injured. Okay, no problem. Bring in Jaguar. He's our healthiest defender. That's fine. That's the position he plays. Good thing we saved that third sub. <clears throat> And getting stuck in is kind of Jaguar's deal. That's what he likes to do. He'll do that anyway. Even if you don't tell him, even if you tell him not to, he will get stuck in. That's just kind of his jam. Here's Osario. Free kick. Curls it in. Piet. Again. Shot is off. Again. Shout. Demand more. We're composed and motivated right now, so we're just, uh, we're just not winning. Mexico might get away with another 1-1 or 1-0 victory. Definitely a different philosophy from this coach than Tata. You know, Tata beat us badly a few times. This guy is just sort of fine with eking out 1-0 victories. 89 minutes already down. He just eating up that clock five minutes of stoppage time due to all the injuries and substitutions and whatnot rain delay <sighs> okay do they have rain delays in fm that would be interesting i mean i don't know how you would simulate that other than to just say hey there's been a rain delay congratulations you win a prize two minutes to go minute and a half we might be getting a uh, highlight we go very attacking a minute to go. Cabra's been booked. 95 minutes. Jiguer with the destruction. Taking over the Destructor nickname from Piet. Final highlight. Guzman doesn't even have to throw it in. Just drops the ball in disgust. Two injuries. An own goal was the difference in the 36th second of the first half. I mean, other than that, you could, I mean, you can't say we dominated the game, but we definitely held even with Mexico, had the possession, had a fairly equal number of shots. They still had more. 1-0, 1-0. What are you going to do? We tried to attack as much as we could. They just weren't having it. Um, not happy. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Not happy. Okay, so that's going to end our Canada duty for a while. Hocking and injured on Canada duty. Up three to four weeks just in time for the MLS playoffs. That's lovely. Canada knocked out of the Nations League. Um... Let's send the assistant. I just want to move forward a little bit and make sure we don't get fired over this situation. I don't think we should. Canada duty ends. Okay, okay. Fine. Next on red. Yellow card limit. Because, uh, you know, I, I say that. Because of the way sort of uh, the international the international competitions are structured when we look at our team. It's like, 
you know the the gold cup has disappeared from our list of competitions they're just sort of minorly happy that we qualified for the world cup it's very weird very strange take a look at uh, the board look at that board confidence 49 percent we won the gold cup this year we won the gold cup why do you why did you forget that you look at the competition performances you know qualified for the world cup details minimum expectation was to reach the third round they're delighted that the team qualified from the third round but that's it it's like 57 percent I, you know, it's uh, it's disturbing. Not happy about it, but it seems perhaps that we've kept our job. I want to get here to Monday the 11th and and see what happens. You know, when Canada duty actually ends, I want to see what the board says. So as I mentioned before, if I get fired over this. I'm going to be extremely unhappy, like very unhappy. It might be a situation where I go out, buy the editor, install the editor, and then put myself back as the manager. Like that might be how angry I get. We shall see. Okay, I could, I guess I could have paused it and moved on, but I want, I want to experience the rage in real time so far everything seems okay all right if i'm fired we'll come back and uh, rage about it but so far it seems okay all right haven't been fired yet so until next time we'll see you later bye bye <laughs>